Hey guys, welcome to Helvetic Arms. Today we got a little treat for you. We got the uh, STGW 57, AKA the SIG 510. This is the standard uh, weapon of the Swiss Army during the uh, Cold War for a long time until the 90s. So uh, we got a nice boy right here. This one is in semi-auto, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. We have 24 round magazines, but we're not gonna be filling, the, filling them up all the way. And we're gonna do a little run through this uh, course of fire to see uh, just how fast we can run it uh, doing some tactical shit. All right, so let's, let's get on with it, let's go. Loading. It's a big charging handle. All right, weapons on set. Now we're empty, that's it. All right, so the uh, first time that we ran with the 57 was 45-23 with this uh, particular course of fire. Now we're empty, that's it. All right, all right. This thing's nice, it's a heavy, heavy boy. But it doesn't recoil too much because it's so heavy. Uh, it has a similar roller lock system to the H case. We're not gonna go into that right now, but pretty good, pretty good. The hardest part about this is that you'll notice the safety here is very hard. You cannot reach it at all with your fingers from this position. There's no way you have to take your hand off the trigger, uh, excuse me, the pistol grip and actuate it. So you kind of have to trade this like an AK safety. I would say this might, depends on how much practice you have, but it might actually be slower than an AK safety. So, uh, but hey, we're talking about some serious firepower here. We got a big round. 7.5 Swiss, so not bad. All right, let's do something else. Hey guys, so now we are gonna run the FAL, AKA in this case, the L1A1. This is a British Army L1A1, uh, courtesy of Boomstick CH. Go check him on Instagram, he's got some awesome shit. Really appreciate him letting me use this weapon. Um, this is uh, one with the old, uh, the old uh, wooden handguards here. Got this beautiful finish, old handguard, some great patina on this thing. So uh, British military L1A1. Looks like one of the earlier generations. So you can tell by this little handle do, that's an earlier generation. So we're gonna try to run it through the same course of fire we went through with the STGW 57. And um, we're gonna see how this goes. Um, this is right off the bat, way lighter than the STGW 57. So I will say it has to have points there, but hey, there's reasons for that but this thing is lighter. All right, so let's load and make ready. Got a couple rounds in the mag here. We'll do one mag change. Rifle is loaded. 
these are out of the, uh, these always are in semi-auto, even the military ones. So uh, these don't, aren't converted or anything. They're always semi-auto L1A ones. So, all right, let's get our timer. One second, I just noticed something. I was like, well, that's a really small front sight, rear sight. The rear sight was folded here. So let's take it back here. We'll try it one more time with the actual rear sight folded out. Something interesting to mention on the normal FAL, the rear sight is fixed. On the L1A ones, the rear sight is folding. All right, restart. All right, it looks like my goggles are folding down the rear sight. One more time. Looks like Up because my goggles are starting to fall fog up a little bit here, so you don't want to shoot what you can't see. So, you let it. That was strange. Okay. Shooting impressions though, right off the bat, had a little, I'm not sure what happened there. It looks like there was a, uh, maybe a failure to feed, I'm not sure. Um, a round was still in the chamber area when it stopped shooting. So I'm guessing that's what happened, but let's give it a break. This is an old gun. It's had a life already, a career. But right off the bat, it is easier to handle by quite a large margin than the STGW 57 because the safety is uh, quite a bit easier to manipulate. You can manipulate it here with one finger with your thumb quite easily, even easier than the actual Belgian FAL, I would say. So uh, this thing is a lot lighter, easier to manipulate. Um, the rear sight folding down, see there, just folded down again. I think it's because it's a little used and older. I have seen examples where this is a lot harder to fold down, but hey, in the heat of battle, sure, that could be a disadvantage if you knock it. That being said, on the SDGW 57, both sights, the front and the back, can also fold. So, in theory, that would be twice uh, the chance for error or issues if you're folding it uh, accidentally. Either changing it like this, making the range not quite as it should be, or just losing the, the rear sight or front sight altogether. So, altogether though, this gun is just super awesome. Uh, just what a classic. What a classic. So the time 
that we have here is 40, 31. I'm not sure I'm doing these things very consistently though, so we'll see. All right. All right, so uh, I forgot to mention too, we didn't think about it at the time. Uh, one of the issues that could have happened with the, uh, the, the malfunction is the, uh, the gas uh, setting might have been off. This is an FAL style weapon, so there's literally like infinite settings almost. Uh, there's a bunch of different settings that you can put this for the gas, depending on the ammo, the, um, uh, the conditions of the environment. So uh, you have to fine tune these a little bit. That could have been off, which would have definitely uh, been able to cause a malfunction like that. So not gonna count that against the rifle either. So uh, we'll toy with it and see if we can try it again.